Hi, everyone. It's Dr. Jason Granzetta from the Tri Health Wellness Center. I'm joined by Chanel Perry, registered holistic nutritionist. Chanel's experience as a nutritionist has come from various settings, such as women's fitness boot camp, clinics, seminars, cooking videos, and most recently as a mom of two. It all began with her love of cooking shows and her own run in with food sensitivities and allergies. Chanel loves to help others navigate the vast world of food and flavor as it relates to health and is determined to motivate individuals to do the best they can. She has coined the term realistic eating and wants to be able to eat for health while also enjoying great flavors and having time to do it all. And uh, did I mention she's also my sister? Everyone, Chanel Perry. Hi, everyone. Hello. Today Hello. we're talking about the healing process. Yes. Yeah. It, Different it, for it, everyone. Yes. Yes. Why don't you tell me what your experience with the healing process? So um, I pretty much discovered that I had food sensitivities um, probably since early teens. It, it may have even started before that, but I just didn't think that the symptoms would have added up to that. Um, but really yeah, began. You were a kid. Like, what would you know? I remember you having tummy aches every day after dinner. All the time. All the time. You were probably um, five. And at the time, we didn't know. I just thought you were a picky eater. Yeah. Oh, Chanel's just complaining again. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it, it, uh, in high school, I literally lived off of Tums and Rolaids. I kept them in my backpack, my purse. I'd eat like 10 of them after every meal. Um, and what would that do? Would that just kind of like settle your stomach? Was that, I guess, the reason why? It would, it would kind of take the, t the pain away temporarily and I guess help me digest a little bit or not, not feel so like sick, nauseous yeah. and yeah. And kind of take the stomach. I don't even know how it would have taken the stomach aches away, but I mm. guess to help break down the food maybe, but, um, yeah, I lived off of Tums and Rolaids. Um, and then in early twenties, um, I don't know if you remember this, we, we actually took like a little road trip with our parents to New York. I remember I was driving most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a long drive. Um, that day I had a a bagel with peanut butter and mm -hmm. I was sick the entire trip and that yeah. and when we got when we got back you told me to try cutting out um dairy or no I was I think I had already cut out dairy at that point but cut out gluten mm. that was my big like gluten awakening and I I got rid of gluten at that point and any time that I would make a mistake and maybe have some right away I'd feel sick and mm. um as soon as I cut it out like instant relief I could eat without having to like run to the washroom or be crouched over in pain. Um, I remember not, I remember Von Mills opened around that time and not being able to walk around the entire mall without being completely exhausted mm -hmm. when I was feeling sick. And when I started eating better and staying away from those trigger foods, yeah. I remember the first time I walked around Von Mills by myself and did the entire mall um, without feeling sick or exhausted. And I was like, yes, I accomplished something. It's working. I feel better. So, um, so you'd yeah. say that food was like the wrong food for you. Something you couldn't digest was like, like it was your kryptonite. It was hurting you more than it was helping you. Totally. Quality yeah. of life was absolutely horrible. Yeah. There was, there was no quality of life. It was just mm -hmm. like, well, What's if you're going to eat and you don't know if this meal is going to bother you, you're going to have pain. It's like, uh, oh, yeah. every meal is a, a guessing game. I'd, I'd avoid going to movies, afraid that I'd have to leave halfway through feeling sick mm -hmm. because something I ate during dinner may have, you know, be bothering me as it's digesting. It was, it was horrible. Absolutely horrible. So yeah. food you, you was. I think it was also difficult because um, it's not like we were seeing any kind of professional advice I mean, I think maybe I was still just in school at that time yeah. and I was and learning totally a lot were. of this too. So you kind of did like trial and error. Yeah, I, I was in a happy way. I was kind of your guinea pig. <laughs> you know, you'd learn something at school and you'd try it out on, on your family and say, you know what, you're experiencing this. I just learned about this in school. Let's see if it helps you. Mm -hmm. And a lot, a lot of the times it did. Yeah. Absolutely. So um, yeah, it, it was completely trial and error. And, and at that time, gluten-free wasn't uh, an option at the stores or the restaurants. No, not like it is now. And then even when oh. it became a little bit more in the spotlight, the, the first batches were horrible. 
Oh. It wasn't like you didn't eat it because it's enjoyable. You ate it because, well, it's just, I won't get sick off it. That's right. But that's come a long way because I think now, like, you can almost fool anybody with the gluten free stuff saying, like, oh, this, I didn't even realize whether it's, uh, if it's bread or grain products or pastas or desserts. Now it's like, you, I, I mean, we're, we're gluten free, as you know. So it, I, I would, I don't miss it. I mean, I could miss something like, you know, you know, someone who has like a, their specialty is some kind of lasagna. I mean, I get that because sometimes the alternatives are, it's not the same. They're good, but they're not like grandma's, you know, you know, yes. that's, that's uh, you know, her dish that everyone knows. Yeah. But it's, I think it's more than passable. Now it's enjoyable. Now you can have a lot of your favorite things and you're not looking back. And even if you don't have, you know, celiac or severe digestive issues. If you just feel like heavy after a meal that's like wheat based or, or dairy, now For you sure. can have some of those alternatives and you're like, I, I feel actually, I feel light. I feel like, I, I don't feel like how I used to feel. Cause I think we got used to the idea, like you have something and maybe a richer food and you're going to feel like you're out of commission for an hour or two. So I was like, is that really what we should be doing? Is, is food meant to do that? I thought food was meant to give us energy. Right, exactly. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I mean, even in our household, when, when you know, we first got married, I'd, like, I'd make gluten-free pasta for me, and, and Michael would have you know, regular pasta because he didn't like the flavor of it. And, and I mean, it would, the regular pasta would bother him. But he just figured, nah, I like it. It tastes better than the gluten-free. But now we're strictly gluten-free because it, we've tried brands and we've come to one that we know tastes good and mm -hmm. he feels better after it. So, we, I mean, sometimes, and I mean, there's still times that it's like, yeah, I would love to eat, you know, food that has gluten in it if it didn't bother me. Yeah. But, but knowing that I'll, I'll actually be able to feel good and function after this meal mm -hmm. rather than, you know, maybe having something that, taste normal you know yeah. but then i'm not going to be able to like go for a walk and get take care of my kids mm -hmm. play with my kids or do or do household it. chores like it, it's so not worth it yeah we were at a barbecue not too long ago and uh, they had gluten-free buns um and and some of them are great some of them weren't that great i guess this this brand wasn't i guess i didn't i didn't appreciate it much so i'm like i'm just gonna have this burger on its own and and for sure bread because maybe i don't need the extra carbs anyways uh right. and then a couple of weeks later we had different uh hamburger buns and they were great they they just was the right right brand right ingredients whatever it is so it is i think it's still a like a developing area of health and food um and a lot of people they'll ask me like is this this gluten stuff or dairy stuff is this in your head because <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I've always eaten it. I've eaten this way for my whole life. I, I mean, I don't, I don't get the issue. And then you'll get some people that'll say, you know, I tried being gluten-free for a little while. And then I tried some gluten and then I felt really sick. Like I never had this before. Now I, you, you've made me become gluten. <laughs> yes. So when I tell, when I hear that, I usually tell people, if you're eating something, whatever it may be, it could be an allergen, gluten, et cetera. If you're eating it all the time, your body develops some type of like tolerance. You still might have symptoms, but it's always there. It's always like a nagging issue. If you give yeah. your body a break, if you avoid it for a while, and then you go back to it, it's as if you've, you've had something for the first time. You have this, all the acute symptoms. I mean, right. have you ever experienced that? Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, um, I, I, I've really tried not to go back. Um, if you've ever had something by yeah. accident, I mean, I have. I, I think recently yeah. I had something that had dairy in it. Uh, I think for two weeks I've had, I had issues. Yeah, oh yeah, no. A lot if, of it's even just sinus, my snoring, my, I feel like my eyes are swollen in the morning, just off. <laughs> Oh, yeah, Maria, yeah. my wife, she'll say like, would it, you had something. I know there was something in what we ordered or if we, yeah. we went somewhere and it's out of the ordinary. So yeah. we notice it. We become a little bit of more of a stricter barometer. And I think part of that is actually a good thing. It's like you kind of want to know when you're eating something, something is doing harm as it comes in. Right. You don't want to be like a... I do, 
Yeah, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, you don't want it to be like a silent killer. Like you're eating mm -hmm. it and it's doing harm inside, but you're not having any reaction. You kind of want that reaction. So, you know, this is harmful to me. I've got to stay away from it. Yeah. And I think that's a, a thing that confuses patients and some doctors too, because if you have a sensitivity, sensitivities are in the spectrum of allergies. It might not be an anaphylactic or a highly acute reaction. It's not going to give you all the alert symptoms, whether it's vomiting or hives, um, but it can cause like, it, at times it can be acute symptoms or, and, or, you know, a day later, later on that day, or the whole week following. And, the antibodies that are being triggered are different than the ones that you would have tested on a skin scratch test or your allergist. Right. A lot of allergists now are doing the blood test. They're doing the IgG sensitivity, um, which we've been, been promoting and touting for like 15, 20 years, because we know that th when you consume something, the, react the reaction is different than if you were testing an allergy through the skin. Like you can have sensitivity to strawberries and they do a scratch test and you might have a reaction, but you may not. But you know, if you eat them, you'll be in the washroom for two days. Right. So that sort of thing is a tangible empirical ev evidence that can't be ignored. And sometimes a scratch test ignores it. it, it it's not the right test. It's not going to detect that. So I'm, I I'm, a, I'm a perfect example of that when it comes to like peanuts and tree nuts, like any kind of, of nut product. Um, because after, I mean, or my early twenties, I went to go get tested for, um, a peanut allergy because I noticed that if, um, I walked into a room and someone was eating peanut butter, I wouldn't even have to know that they're eating peanut butter. As soon as I walk in that room, my breathing changed. I feel flushed. My stomach starts hurting just the smell of it. Mm -hmm. So, um, I've never had an anaphylactic reaction. I, I went to an allergist, did the, the prick test or the skin test. She said, mm, you kind of maybe react a little bit to almonds. If it bothers you, stay away from it. You're, you're not uh, allergic. But mm -hmm. when, when I've done like the red paw test, or um, I think I did a blood test with you years ago. Like I need to re I repeat it because. Yeah, um, you did your IgG a long time ago. And the red paw is yeah. like an electrodermal screening. Yeah. So that test told me that I was anaphylactic. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm kind of in the middle of I'm anaphylactic and I'm not. So I've, I've stayed away from peanuts for like 15 years now um, and any kind of nuts just because I'm terrified. Right. Yeah. Like you, it, it's good to have that blood test, like that IgG, Ig um, blood test, because it, it gives you a, a complete Tangible chart. Tangible results. It's the exactly. antibodies. Exactly. And that's the other thing with in terms of sensitivities. So you can, I, I kind of do three categories. I'm like, you either have sensitivities slash allergies and that you know of by a test. You either have very weak digestion and anything can bother you at any time. Uh, and then you've got some kind of random combination of two where it's like, sometimes it bothers you, sometimes it doesn't. It's hit and miss. Um, right. We kind of have to get to a point where we develop an algorithm to understand when a patient comes in, what are your symptoms? How do you feel with certain foods? Are you having any kind of acute reaction? Okay, no. You're having some kind of mild subacute chronic reaction, or do you have, you have joint pain? Do you have chronic digestive issues? Do you have skin issues? Skin is a big one. Skin 100%. is almost exclusively dietary triggered. And a lot of yeah. people give me grief about it because like, well, it's a skin condition. It's like, your skin is only detoxifying what's happening in the intestine and the, and the lung. And in Chinese medicine, it does such a great job of intertwining and interconnecting the different organ systems and how they relate and why one is contributing to the function of the other. Western medicine, for all its benefits and, and life-saving abilities, just it's not drawing any conclusions or connections there. So, no. so if you've got eczema, it, change your diet. Start there. And, and a lot of people, and this is another thing I'm, I'm kind of drawing on patient experience. A lot of patients will say, okay, you know what? I thought maybe it was dairy. I stayed off dairy for two weeks, didn't do anything, went back. I took gluten out, didn't do anything, went back. So you need to sort of hit everything across the board. You need to sort of say like, what are all these foods? And you can't cut out all of them. You have to eat, you have to survive. And food avoidance is only meant to be short-term and diagnostic. So if you do an elimination diet in lieu of doing the food sensitivity test, because even the food sensitivity test, it could miss things. 
It's right. much more diagnostic. It'll give us 90% of the picture, but you might be lacking a stomach acid or enzyme activity. You might have a dysbiotic gut where you have bacterial overgrowth, and which is also going to interfere with immune function. So people who don't digest well, and usually these are people who are stressed out, is people that overthink. Their gut doesn't turn on when they have food in it. They're in sympathetic was, overdrive. I was just going to say, so years ago when, when I, st I, I got rid of gluten, uh, I got to a point where I was eating the same thing for lunch and dinner every day because I knew what was safe and I stuck with it. Um, yeah. And everything else was bothering me because my body was in hyperactive sensitivity mode. Um, and you were eating out of fear. Oh, totally, yeah. totally. And um, and everything was bothering my stomach because my my system was under so much stress. Um, uh, so even back then, I couldn't eat tomatoes. You mm -hmm. know, now I can eat tomatoes. And I noticed that when when I'm going through a period of stress, whether it be emotional, phys uh, emotional, physical, mental, whatever it is, again, those foods that used to be a trigger for me come back and start bothering me again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So I'll notice that, you know, like I'll go like a month and it's like I'll eat tomatoes or tomato sauce and it'll bother me. Right. And so I kind of reevaluate, OK, what's going on? Why? Like what else is bothering me? Um, so, yeah, definitely. And then once you heal, heal your gut and and decrease the stress you're you're able to reintroduce foods again because now your body has been able to heal itself it's not kind of fighting against those foods mm -hmm. um anymore and it's able to metabolize and, and break down those foods because you you probably have a normal or healthy balance of those enzymes that you need right yeah. so it's totally possible to cut things out um and there's times that they may bother you and they may not um but mm -hmm. that it's it's a constant work in process progress sorry yeah um, um you know you, our, one thing i, I want to say is the yeah. best example is when someone goes on vacation and i've had them on a very very strict diet they'll come back and they'll be like guess what i can eat this this and this now i'm like yeah really? and they're like yeah i had it on vacation because you know i didn't have my opting you know gluten-free or this and that i didn't have my so i just went with it and i felt fantastic and i'm like yeah. be careful and then yeah. they'll always come back and be like, you know how I said I could eat anything? Yeah, it's not, it wasn't a good idea because I've been kind of sick since I've gotten back from my trip. Yeah. What does that mean? What do you think that means? Well, so as you're saying that, I'm thinking of two different things. One, your body might, because you're on vacation and you're probably a lot less stressed, mm -hmm. your body is able to absorb nutrients better, to break down food easier, so your body, body can handle those foods. As yep. soon as you come back, it's like, I got to go back to work tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I got to do all this laundry, you know, get the kids ready for school. Like every, all that stress comes back. Real life comes back. Yeah. And, and all the symptoms come back. Mm -hmm. um, I'll come back to you with the other thing because I kind of forgot. <laughs> I think that that was where I wanted to go with yeah. it. it yeah. It's, when you are, are able to turn off that stress, stress state, that sympathetic yeah. overdrive. I remember. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and the fact that you've been staying away from it, and now you might have an episode of, of having that food. And for that moment, it may not bother you. Yeah. Because, because you haven't had it for so long. Your, your body's kind of healed. It can handle a minuscule you get amount. a little pass. A first time, yeah. okay, we'll let it go this time. And then if, right. when you start having something second, third, fourth time, your, yeah. your second brain and the gut says, I remember this. This is, yeah. I don't like you guys. Get out no. of here. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So those two things usually happen. Yeah. 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 And I, that's another thing is when I do an elimination and we remove the, the triggering foods, when we bring it back the first time, everyone's so ecstatic. They're like, I can have cheese. I can have it. I had it. I didn't have it. I felt fantastic. I'm like, okay, that's good. Um, maybe just give it a week and try again, again. So like, don't, don't go crazy. Cause if you start having it two, three, four times in a week, it's going to bother you because right. your body hasn't fully healed yet. It takes a while. And people who have digestive issues, they tend to always have some kind of digestive issues. That's your weak spot. Everyone's got an area of affinity where when stress increases, that's the spot that flares up. So right. You've got your tummy is your weak spot. You're, when you're stressed out, that's the one. That's the first. Don't be surprised. So, yeah. And, and it, I, I, I'm not meaning this to be resigned. And it's like, oh, you're always going to have this problem. The reality is 
the body's always healing something and repairing something. And then it, each person based on genetics, based on their lifestyle, there's an area that's going to be the flare up spot. So for sure. For the gut, it's, it's, it's a lot of people for the gut. And it's funny when you look at families, like I, I don't know if you have this experience with seeing multiple family members. Um, mm -hmm. You kind of see it across the board in everyone. It's like, okay, you know, so-and-so has uh, diabetes. Well, mm -hmm. let's look at your whole family. Mm -hmm. How many people in your family have diabetes, right? Like it's, it's not necessarily a hereditary thing, although it usually can be, but sometimes mm -hmm. it's just the way you're, you're, personality deals with things mm -hmm. that could be the weak spot and that weak spot can run in your family too sure, sure. right it, it's a definitely it's an there's an inheritable aspect to it whether yeah. then it's also environmental you know you grew up in a family sure. that eat a lot of nightshades and then guess what over time some of you have a sensitivity to nightshade foods i mean totally probably overexposure it could be a totally. little stress and then there's always that runt in the family that can eat everything and they <laughs> slim all the time who knows? Yeah. Like, no? yeah. 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 So, I mean, we started talking about uh, the healing process and then we just totally dived into sensitivity. Totally. <laughs> but I, I guess that's part of our healing process. Yeah. I think we both are, are kind of diligent with our diets and digestion and things that affected us because, yeah. I mean, growing up, I thought I could eat everything, but also growing up, I had chronic seasonal allergies and to the yes. point go on the step on grass without a hay fever attack so yeah um yeah and but now it's better it's a lot better i mean it's sure. it can flare up there's certain times when you know the the pollen index is high and maybe i've been a little bit off with my eating and it'll bother me and for sure and i actually that's a, a perfect like segue into what i was going to say next because um, some people will say, you know, you hear about, you know, let's call him Jim. There's this man, Jim, and he exercises. He goes for a run every morning and um, he's it in great sense. shape. makes sense. His name is Jim. <laughs> 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 and Mr. <laughs> Cook is a chef. Okay. okay, we could call him Bob. Whatever. There's a, a man and he exercises and he, and, you know, he, he's fit and he, and he takes care of himself. And, you know, I heard he just had a heart attack. How does that happen? Poor guy. Jeez. <laughs> no. And my point is no matter, you know, it can happen to anyone. Disease happens. It can happen to healthy people. It can happen to unhealthy yeah, people. Yeah, this is true. But this is true. What you want to keep, but what you want to keep in mind is he, he will probably survive it or recover quicker than someone who doesn't take care of their health, sure. right? Who's like, someone who, who doesn't exercise, who's overweight, who has high body fat, yeah. you know? So their ability to bounce back is, but exactly. I mean, there, there is the aspect of the inevitable or something is just even random events. Like, you know, it can't, something can happen to anybody. Yeah. But you also want to be in a state of health where it's like, well, if something does happen, I want to heal fast. I don't want to exactly. be like one of those, like, oh, you know, there's not much we can do because you're kind of, you know, in bad shape to start with. Right. You yourself something to work with. Right. No, exactly. So you want to, it, it's about prevention. You know, I'm not saying, you know, you have to eat a hundred percent, you know, perfect diet, mm -hmm. go to the gym five days a week. Like you don't have to do everything if you can't, but don't feel like, well, I can't do all these things. So what's the point of even doing one? Yeah, you no, do up, something. You know. Some better than nothing. If, if you have a tendency yeah. to go for a big burger and a drive through uh, once a week, don't say, well, because I do that, I'm not going to bother exercising. I'm not going to bother eating healthy the rest of the week. I'm like, exactly. I'd rather you just have that, but you are yeah. at the gym and you do eat well because over time you might realize, why am I eating this? I mean, yeah, maybe it's a treat, but you know what? It's somewhat sabotaging all my effort. As right. opposed to saying, I just want that burger and you know what, if I, it means that I have to give up other things and so be it. Okay. I mean, we got to work out what's best for the person. I always tell them on your birthday, do whatever you want. Yeah. If you're on vacation, I don't exist, but 90% right. of the time you got to follow this plan because you're going to sure. feel better. And if you feel better, it motivates you to keep going and doing more and being That's more right. diligent because it is, it's lifelong and it's a lot of planning but then it also becomes habit and it's a good habit. Yes. And it's yeah. easier once you get into a routine and start learning 
what I, what are my triggers? What, I mean, why do I eat certain things? Am I bored? Am I hungry? Did I eat, not eat enough during the, the day? And you start right. adopting better habits, which set you up for the rest of like eat first thing in the morning. I mean, I grew up, never had breakfast ever. No, we didn't. And I talked to a lot of people in our, our age group and it's like breakfast was sort of like, eh, yeah, if you have time. Now yeah. it's sort of, now it's like in our, in our society, it's like, what do you mean? That's, that's the most important meal of the day. And, and don't you wake up hungry? Like, don't you wake up looking forward to, I do. I look when you to start, people who don't have breakfast, that a lot of the times I'm not hungry. I'm like, yeah. listen, you start, you put like just any, put a cracker in your mouth first thing you wake up. By day three, you're going to be like, I'm, I need something. My stomach's burning for sure. <laughs> And I go to bed thinking makes up. What's that? <laughs> I go to bed thinking of my breakfast. <laughs> okay, which I is, guess you you make great is, breakfast. I do, but um, no, yeah. It, once you get into those healthy habits, like like you said, start small, and yeah. uh, like that's why I call it realistic eating. Like, let's be realistic. You're not going to go from not having breakfast to having like you know, a, a veggie egg omelet or like, you know, you're not mm -hmm. going to jump to that. Nothing complex okay. or a lot of effort, but you know what, eventually no. you, it, you have the drive because your energy levels and metabolism are improved. It's like you wake up motivated. Yeah. You wake up totally. not motivated. Start with your diet. Start, yeah. get, get rid of the garbage first. Don't buy For it. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. If it's not in the house, then I mean, you're not going to, you drive to the grocery too store lazy to, to go out to get it yeah and then there's that uber eats yeah <laughs> i mean kind of sabotaging <laughs> what we're working on yeah i mean there's healthy op there is a literally a healthy there's category. lots of healthy options just there's you know what you sabotage I, yourselves but there's always a way to correct it totally and i went through the first like wave of gluten-free people like I was probably maybe like five years in to when it started. If I could get through that, <laughs> yeah. anyone can get through going to the grocery store now or going to restaurants now and it's eating way healthy. Easier. Yeah, yeah. Way easier. Before you'd be like, I can't have gluten. And they'd be like, what? What's a gluten? What's gluten? Yeah. yeah. Now, like I mean, everyone, <laughs> everyone knows what gluten is. And yeah. And, and everyone I mean, knows someone that can't have it. I just want to touch on the like, and maybe kind of wrap up in terms of like, why, why all these sensitivities? Like to me, I, I, it's hard to kind of pinpoint what it is about gluten, but the fact is um, certain cultures and certain parts of the world where they have uh, gluten containing foods, they're able to digest it. Um, and maybe in North America, we're having issues Maybe it's the processing, maybe it's the type of wheat, maybe it's something in our gut, maybe it's a, uh, a back, bad bacteria, it could be anything. I mean, yeah. something, I, I, and, but ultimately, I think it is stress. Once you have that level of stress that's shutting down you the parasympathetic nervous system, the neurons that's trigger the di digestive juices and enzymes, you're not breaking down anything. You, your body just goes into like a fermentation phase and, and you're going to be bloated after each meal. So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of blaming that ultimately it is stress because someone who's not stressed, they can eat it. Right. Yeah. And, and if, I mean, so stress I think is number one and a close second, I think is the way foods are, are processed, manufactured and grown um, nowadays. And because I mean, there's so much more demand, mm -hmm. L less people are growing their own gardens, do, like doing their own farming, um, you know, uh, growing their own wheat and making their own flour and things like that. So, what do so you mean? I do that. <laughs> churn your butter. <laughs> yeah, Pioneer Village. So, so there's more of a demand to increase, you know, it's yield. Crop you have to have crops that yield and fast. And I mean, so what's the best way to do that? Boost them up with some some chemicals, right? Like make them grow faster. And our bodies aren't built to break that down. And then especially when you're coming into a society that's more high stress, you know, especially let's even say the last 30 years, whoever's grown up in the last 30, 40 years, I think there's a lot more stress because we live in a society that's go, 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 you know, computers have come a long way and technology and everything. Like we, we put so much into our day that, you know, it, it's just, it's just too much. There's just too much going we're on. We're overstimulated. Yeah. 
totally. So how can our bodies break down food the way it used to when we have all this other stuff going on? And I feel bad for the kids that are growing up now and in the future because I, I only see it getting more like stimulate, like overstimulate yeah. stimulation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. And especially now with like everything going on in the world and the pandemics and everything, it's just, it's mm-hmm. too much, too much. So, I mean, we had a good break. We need to just slow it down. Prevention, um, getting yeah, ourselves reset. checked out. Let's just hit the reset button and, yeah. and take our health a little bit more seriously and be like, listen, I, sure. you know, I do have issues with my gut. Um, I, I know it's a pain to kind of change my diet, but at least start eating better, but make yeah. better choices. And I mean, yeah. I'm not saying that you have to be, you know, a vegetarian or a vegan or anything no. like ultra strict or, but, but for some people that's what's necessary. And, and that's why I, I'm a big proponent of speaking to professionals that are experts in digestion and diets, because for then sure. we can take the symptoms you're experiencing and say like, Hey, you know, why don't you try it like this? I know right. you can read and you can buy a book and you can kind of try and trial and error on your own. But if you have someone else that can help you, you know, be accountable and come up with ideas and coach you through it, um, you're more likely than not, you're going to feel better and you're going to see where you're kind of missing, missing some information. And then, and then you actually start learning a lot on your own. You, and every person who sure. has food sensitivity, they end up being a bit of an expert over time. Yeah. Ta-da. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. And and I would love if we could do like a part two or part three. Like there's so easy, many. Easy, easy. Take it easy. <laughs> there's so many ways we could, like things we can go on. We can talk about, you know. Um, Dairy. What to expect when you do change up your yeah. routine. Like, you know, what symptoms and how, how you do heal the process of that. Mm-hmm. Like, I think we wanted to start with that. but Yeah, that of, was, I think, our initial, the, the, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or ML, and, but but we'll talk about that and we'll talk about, you know, these fad diets and these detoxes and mm-hmm. how where they're helpful and where they're not. So um okay. yeah, we'll do that and yeah, it'll be good. Okay, that sounds good. Okay. We'll have to book sounds something good. in the near future. All cool. right. Well thank you. It was a blast. I'm thank you. Blast. It was a pleasure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, everyone. You're gonna catch okay. us on YouTube. And Chanel, where can people find you on social media? Uh, nutritionelle on Instagram. Um, check out my morning posts. I post my smoothie bowl breakfast every morning with a little song in the background. <laughs> spell <laughs> your uh, spell your Instagram because it's unique. So nutritionelle N U T R I C H A N E L. That's great. All right, thank you, everyone. We'll catch you next time. Okay. Okay. Bye. Bye.